Now, to begin with, cost accounting involves measuring, recording, and reporting of product costs. Remember, in module two, we made a major distinction between product costs and period costs. Here, we are only talking about product costs. Product costs are three categories, direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. So therefore, those three uh, categories of costs must be applied to the product as the product is being produced so that we are able to come up with a true cost of what it costs us to manufacture our product. And that's so very, very important because we set our selling price in such a way to, to recover the cost we use to produce our product. But not only that, we need to, uh, to recover the cost of selling and marketing that product and delivering it to the customers. So we have to have a good idea of what it actually cost us to produce our product. Now, we call it a cost accounting system, but it's not a separate system from the regular financial accounting system that you all came to know and love in, in your financial accounting course. Uh, there's just a few extra accounts in the general ledger. That's all the cost accounting system is. As I told you, there are three different inventories now, so you have three inventory accounts. But there's a few other accounts for manufacturing overhead that are added to the existing financial accounting system. So that's what it means here. The accounts used in cost accounting are fully integrated in the general ledger uh, system that you have. Now, there are two types of accounting syst cost accounting systems, basically, two extremes. And it depends on the type of product that you manufacture. One is called the job order cost system, which we will focus on. And the other is called a process cost system. Now, the distinction between the two, a job order cost system assigns the cost to a particular job. That is, we have a kind of a manufacturing process, a manufacturing system here, where each job that's being worked on is different. Each job takes a different amount of material. Each job takes a different amount of labor. Therefore, each job must be assigned a different amount of overhead, okay? For example, let's assume I am producing my desk. You can imagine there's wood on the desk, laminate and metal. All right. Now, I might have an order for one desk, a certain size, a certain style. Well, that's one job. Then the next order might be for 100 desks for Abu Dhabi University, and each desk being this size and that size. That's another job. So you see each job now uh, has different characteristics, all right? And our objective is to compute the cost per job so that we know when the job is finished just exactly how much direct material, how much direct labor, and how much overhead was consumed in the production of that job. That's a job order cost system. I'll keep hitting that wrong button. Okay. For example, let's assume I'm a print shop. And one job, job 9501, I give each job a different number, is a job to print wedding invitations. And that job requires the printing of 225 envelopes, particular kind of stock material, uh, different kind of typesetting, different kind of ink. So you see, we want to accumulate the cost to producing that product. The next job or the job that's 
also being worked on at the same time in this plant or factory is a job to print menus for a number of, for a restaurant. Now, can you hear me all right? Because I'm getting notices that says bad quality. Can everybody hear me okay? Sometimes it breaks, but yes. 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 Yeah. Hey, the connection, yeah. Doctor. Doctor, I have one suggestion. I try my best, and when I see that little sign, I'll repeat myself. Uh, so this one is about printing menus for a restaurant. Now, of course, different size, different material, different printing. All right, so that's a job order costing system. Contrast that with a process cost system. A process cost system is a manufacturing system that produces a large volume of similar products. And, uh, for example, cereal. Each box of cereal would have the same amount of material, same amount of labor. Same with petroleum produced or product or production of ice cream. The end finished product is exactly the same. That is, it has exactly the same amount of material. Now, the example I use here in LA is that we have a Coca-Cola plant. Now, if you can imagine the production of Coca-Cola, you're all familiar with Coca-Cola. And the, end, the output of the production uh, process is a can of Coke. Now, each can of Coke is exactly the same. It has exactly the same amount of material, labor, and overhead went into it. So how do we cost a can of Coke? Well, we really don't do it on an individual basis like we did in job costing. What we do is we accumulate the cost for a time period, a week or a month. So during the week, we accumulate all the material costs that went into the process. There's that sign again, bad quality. I don't know why. Okay, okay. we accumulate all the direct material for a week that went into the production of Coca-Cola. All the labor that was spent, all right? And the overhead, the heating costs, the electricity costs for a week. And we divide that by the amount of cans of coke produced during that week so you see we trace the costs to the process and divide the process those costs by the output of that process for a particular period of time now this is also done by departments or different processes but in job costing the costs are attached to the job in process costing the costs are attached and then the total costs are divided by the output of the you. process. Doctor, can you repeat so the last one? Process costing system. Um, what to do, what to do. I'm screaming at a scream here. <laughs> Let's see what's going on with my internet. Ah. Uh, Okay, wait. Um. Victor, I have one suggestion. No. علق عند ابراهيم ترى ما يسمع Doctor, this is to a plan. We can at all. Doctor, you can't hear me. No, we we hear you like uh like this. 
Oh, no. Doctor, I can hear you. Thank I can you. hear you fine. Uh, uh, technology. Okay, process costing system, we attach the cost to the process. Think of a long series of machines that we put water and uh, syrup and things in and we cook it and we transfer it to another part of the system and so on and so on and we pour it into cans. That is the whole process. And we track all the material that was used and all the labor that was used and the overhead that was consumed. And we divide it through by the number of cans of Coca-Cola that we produce. That's a process costing system. Now, we're not going to spend much time on a process costing system. In fact, that's just about it. We're going to concentrate on a job costing system. But in a process costing system, here's an example you'd be familiar with. Oil, veganism. So we have, we're going to produce DVD discs, but we have a process where we use the oil, we remove the benzene, and then we make the benzene into pellets, and then we uh, flatten those pellets out and make them into DVD discs. That's the whole process. And therefore, we would cost all of that for a week and then divide it through by the number of DVD discs that we produced at the end. All right, now, in a job co order cost system, we now have uh, the cost that parallels the physical flow of materials that are converted into a finished good. Now, keep in mind we have raw materials. They're in storage. Now, raw materials were purchased, so we know exactly how much those raw materials cost us. We take the raw material and we put it through a manufacturing process. All right. Hello? Yes. Yes, we can hear oh. you. We're here. Can you, hear me? can you see the screen, the PowerPoint? No. No. I can. no. no. Yeah? No. no. Yes. Now, yes, doctor. Okay. All right, so we take the raw material out of storage and we put it into process. That is, we start working on it. We start cutting it. We start drilling it. We start gluing it. We start doing all kinds of things to that raw material. We're using labor to convert it, and we're using all kinds of other indirect costs like electricity, for example, and lighting and, and so on. And we convert that raw material into a finished goods. Now, all those costs are cost incurred to produce my finished inventory. So you see they're inventoriable costs, as we talked about back in module two. They were product costs, all right? Now, it, these costs do not become a period cost until we sell them. And then they come out as the cost of goods sold. So if you want to think of it in terms of my accounting system, my T accounts, There are three categories of manufacturing costs, raw material, direct labor, factory labor, and manufacturing overhead. Now they are assigned to work in process. All right, and then when they're completed, so when you assign a work in process, you debit work in process because you increase the value of your inventory. When you're finished, you credit work in process and you debit finished goods inventory for the completed cost of the goods sold, uh, completed the cost of the goods manufactured. Then when you sell it, you credit finished goods inventory and you debit the cost of goods sold. Now, how do we keep track of these costs? Well, 
Each job is different. So what we do is we have what's called a job cost sheet. This is simply a sheet that goes along with the job as it's being worked on. As each job is being worked on, there's a sheet. And on the sheet, the person doing the job records the material they use and the time they spent on doing that job. So you see the job is work in process. Now I'll have two or three jobs going at the same time. These three jobs are actually, each job sheet is a subsidiary ledger for the T account called work in process. All right, when you add up the cost of on each of those three jobs, it will equal what you've recorded in the work and process account. Now, this is what a job cost sheet looks like. Each job will have a number, and the item will be a desk for Abu Dhabi U, quantity 100, date requested as soon as possible. Now it starts by somebody requisitioning some material. So the date and how much material they took. And then they will record their labor. And then they might move on to somebody else who will record that they added more material and they worked on the job and they did another three hours on the job and then they pass it to somebody else. I'll record whether they used more material, more labor until it's finished. Doctor? Now, does, yes. Does the does job order cost uh, differ from, uh, like, for, for for example, I use I use job order cost in production of, of uh, clothing. We choose one, we do for one piece, but does it differ from quantity or it depends on the factory? Like, for example, some factory they will do the job description, the job order cost one by one. Other will do quantities like hundred, or it's the same thing, just different yeah, process. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Um, every cost accounting system is different because everybody's operations are different, and management may want the information like you're talking about one by one, or they might want it in batches. So your point is well taken. Uh, but the point is, the company you're talking about is using a job order cost sheet, but they're using it maybe in a little different way than somebody else, than my example here. For example, if one job is one desk, it would have a job number and it would just have quantity one and we calculate. The next job could be 100 desks, okay? Now you can accumulate that as one job cost and then divide at the end, take the total cost to produce 100 desks and then divide through by 100 if each desk is the same. Or um, you might divide that 100 order for 100 Abu Dhabi University desks into individual job sheets. So it depends. But the point is that the job sheet goes along with the job. And on that job sheet, they record what work and what material they have done. Does that answer your question? Yes, doctor, thank you. Okay. Now, when it's finished, we have to record the manufacturing overhead. But you see, the person working on the job doesn't know what the manufacturing overhead is. What happens now is the job sheet goes up to the, the accounting department where I will take the job sheet now and I will record the manufacturing overhead. And then we have a total of the direct materials, the direct labor and the manufacturing overhead, total costs. And if we want a unit cost, then if we only produce one, then that's it. If we produce a hundred, that we're very same, that was it. Now that order from Abu Dhabi U might be for 100 desks, but there might be 20 this size and 30 that size and 10 this size. Well, you see each one of those would be a different job sheet. They give it a different number, okay? Now, 
How do I assign the material? Well, that's easy. The material, we know what it cost us because we purchased it. Now, we purchased in, and if I'm producing a desk, we purchased in some wood, some laminate, some metal, some glue, some screws, and things of that nature. And they're in a raw material storage. Now, somebody's going to do the job. A new job has been issued, and it's going to require so much material. So the person who's going to do the job now fills out what's called a material requisition slip. That authorizes the person who's controlling the inventory and raw material to give this person that raw material. Now, that raw material could be direct materials like wood, which I can measure exactly how much it's going to be used, or metal. But it can also be glue. When well, you see, the wood and the metal are direct material, but the glue is part of manufacturing overhead. So here's what a material requisition slip would look like, delivered to the assembly department. The date, 200 lithium batteries, dangerous stuff. Stock number this, cost, and total. And one guy signs for it, and the other guy gives it to them. Now, the accountant is going to make the journal entry. For example, in this, in this company, Wallace Company, the guy requisitioned for the period of time, let's say, 30,000 uh, raw material. But of that 30,000, 24 is direct and six is indirect, is the glue. Well, the journal entry then, the account would debit work and process, 24,000. Debit manufacturing overhead for the actual amount of overhead and credit raw materials inventory. So you see, when they post it to the general ledger, they post a credit of 30,000 to the raw material inventory, a debit for the direct material of 24,000 to work and process inventory, and a debit of 6,000 to manufacturing overhead. And already in manufacturing overhead, we already have 13,600. So the manufacturing overhead account is keeping track of the actual overhead incurred. Now, on the shop floor, how did I get that 24,000? Well, during this time period, for job 101, there was 12,000 in material that was requisition. For job 102, there were 7,000. And for job 103, which is a smaller job, there was 5,000. So there's 12, 19, 24. There's your 24,000. But you see, in their general ledger, I only have a debit of 24,000. But on the shop floor, I have three cost sheets. One that has 12,000, one that has seven, and one that has five. So you see these cost sheets, are keeping track, are, rec are reconciled with the work and process at all time. That's why this is called a subsidiary ledger. The job cost sheet is a subsidiary ledger. In my general ledger, I have a T account for work and process. Okay. Now we do the same for labor. We keep track of labor by using time tickets. Now, you know, there's a lot of companies here in the UAE in which everybody and people have to clock in and clock out. Well, on the factory floor, we have time tickets as well. And the person keeps track of their time, hours worked. Uh, the employee, the time ticket would have the employee, the hours worked, and the jobs they worked on, and the total costs. And a time ticket would look like this the guy's name, he worked on 101. He started, he finished four hours. We know how much we pay him. So, uh, continuing with our example, the time tickets are later sent to the payroll department and the employee's hourly wages are paid. All right, 
there were 30 of that 30 28 was for my factory labor my direct labor and 4000 was was other labor, like supervisory labor or janitorial labor that is 28 is direct and four is indirect so what we do is we say okay debit work and process for the 28,000 the direct amount debit manufacturing overhead for the 4,000 and credit factory labor it's sitting there as a debit because it's an expense but now I credit it remove it from an expense and put the uh, put that into work in process and manufacturing so again I take it out of factory labor and I put it in direct part of it goes to work in process and the indirect part goes to manufacturing overhead so you see the manufacturing overhead I continue to accumulate the actual uh, manufacturing overhead incurred and on the shop floor the guy has recorded his uh, time and we have okay of this it's 15,000 there, 9,000 here, and 4,000 there, and 28,000, all right? Now, when the jobs are finished, we send the job sheets upstairs to the uh, accounting department. And the accounting department now will record the manufacturing overhead so that when we add the three together, we get a good idea of what it cost us to produce this job. Now we have a problem because the manufacturing overhead is the cost of electricity, a supervisor's salary, uh, AC, uh, cost of the machines, all of that were costs consumed to manufacture my products, but I don't know exactly how much. So I cannot assign to specific jobs the actual costs. All right. So therefore, to assign manufacturing overhead to work and process and then to specific jobs, we must estimate. We have to do it on an estimated base. We have to guess how much overhead was used in total and how much went to each job. And how we assign that is we use what's called a predetermined overhead rate. Predetermined means an estimate. An estimate, it says pre, because we make this estimate at the beginning of the year. We predict what the overhead rate would be on January 1st, and we apply that rate to all the jobs produced throughout the whole year. All right. So how do I come up with the predetermined overhead rate? Well, I determine that the overhead that I incur in my manufacturing plant uh, can be assigned using some direct activity that I've kept track of when I produce the product. So let me, what they say here is the relationship between estimated annual overhead costs and expected annual operating activity. Um, now the op three types of operating activity, you see on my job sheet, I'm keeping track on each job, how much direct labor costs. It's recorded on the job sheet. Also on the job sheet, I'm keeping track of labor hours. And if I want on my job sheet, I can keep track of the machining hours, how many hours of machining time. So I'm going to use one of these three ways to assign the cost. Now, I just don't guess at this. Management spends time and they look at their production process. Now let's take direct labor hours. Let's assume I'm producing my desk 
And the labor that I use is basically the same. These guys, uh, they know how to cut, they know how to drill, they know how to do stuff like that. They're just basically paid, you know, 20, uh, 20 dirhams an hour. So my production that is a large part of the production cost is labor. So I will use labor hour as my annual operating activity. So to back up, at the beginning of the year, management will sit down, the accountants, and they will say, okay, we know how much overhead we spent last year. We got the bills for the AC, we got the bills for the electricity, we have an idea, and we think that this coming year, it's going to be a million dirhams will be our overhead, total overhead for the whole year. And we talk to the production people and we say, okay, we think we should assign that million dirhams to each job based on how many labor hours have been recorded in producing that job. So the production guy will sit down and say, okay, I think we're going to produce uh, 20,000 desks this year. Each desk taking about five labor hours on average. So therefore, I think the expected annual operating activity for the year will be 100,000. Oh, okay. So the overhead, we expect to be a million. And the operating activity is going to be 100,000 direct labor hours. So therefore, our predetermined overhead rate would be 10 derms for every hour worked on a job. 1 million divided by 100,000 hours. Everybody understand that. So now, this job sheet comes in and it has 10 hours worked on it. So then the accountant will assign 100 dirhams, 10 hours times 10 dirhams an hour, 100 dirhams to that job. The next one comes in and has five hours. Well, it's going to be five times 10 or 50 dirhams to that job. So you see the overhead will be assigned to the job based on the number of direct labor hours. Now we might have a kind of product where you have two different types of labor. You have a general labor that you normally pay 10 dirhams for, and you have a more, edu or more uh, educated, more, uh, let's say, engineering type labor, where it's 20 dirhams an hour. Still a labor kind of production, but there's two types of labor that is used. So what we will do is we still have the estimated annual overhead as a million. We'll say, okay, the annual operating activity, we will add up the different kinds of labor and come up with labor costs. And so here we'll get a percentage. So we look at all the labor costs and the labor cost comes up to 200,000 for the year is what the labor is gonna cost me. So then it's going to be, I'm going to assign that overhead based on 500% um, of whatever the labor costs are, okay? Now, that's for a kind of manufacturing process that is called labor intensive. That is, a lot of labor is used to produce the final product. There are manufacturing processes which are called capital intensive. And a capital intensive pro, uh, process is there's a lot of equipment being used. Lasers cut. Instead of a guy uh, using a saw to cut this wood, this wood is cut by a laser. And lasers and uh, robots glue the thing and so on. So now each job being worked on is a different size, so it probably will consume a different amount of machine hours. So again, we estimate the annual overhead at a million, and now the production guy will say, okay, look, I think we're going to use uh, 250,000 
uh, machine hours you're in here. And they say, oh, okay, good. For every machine hour worked on, we're going to assign four germs per hour. How do I get the four? One million divided by 250,000 machine hours. Okay. In either case, now a company will use either one of these three. Management will decide, not all three, and they'll use it throughout the whole year. Okay. Estimated at the beginning of the year, it's for the whole company, but however, different departments can have different rates. But the formula is basically what we're talking about. As I said, estimated annual overhead costs divided by estimated annual operating activity gives me my predetermined overhead rate. So this is an estimate. This is an estimate. So this number here is the co combination of two estimates. Nevertheless, I'm going to apply Let's say it's fine. Apply that for the actual direct labor hours worked on each job. I have the actual because it's on my job cost sheet. And I simply assign that to each job. Job one, job two, job three. But notice I'm using the actual amount of hours or the actual amount of direct labor costs times an estimate. And that is the only way I can assign these indirect costs to the job. Okay, to give you an illustration, Wallace uses direct labor costs. And every problem you're going to get, they have to tell you what the base is, direct labor costs. And they have to tell you what they expect the overhead to be and what the direct labor costs will be. So they said compute the overhead. Well, the overhead is 280, direct labor costs 350, so therefore it's 80%, it's expressed as a percent, which basically means if we're talking dollars, as we are here, that every dollar of direct labor worked on a job, the accountant will assign, assign 80 cents. Allocate. Now this 280,000 is the overhead for a whole year. And there are going to be all kinds of jobs worked on during the whole year. So we have to sort of divide this 280,000 up in such a way that each job gets its fair share of overhead. Okay, now keep in mind each job is a different size. So the larger the job, the more the overhead. Well, the larger the job, they would use more direct labor costs. And so therefore they would pick up more overhead. That's the idea. And how do I assign this now? So I keep track and I determine that 28,000 direct labor costs were consumed this month. So the overhead, 8,000 direct labor costs were consumed, the overhead would be 22,400. So the journal entry is debit work in process. There's your third cost, remember? Third cost item, we had direct material, direct labor. Now you're debiting work in process with the manufacturing overhead. But you're crediting manufacturing overhead. Recall when I did the actual direct material, uh, the indirect material was debited to manufacturing overhead. The indirect labor was debited to manufacturing overhead. But here, when I apply manufacturing overhead to work and process, I am crediting manufacturing overhead. Anyway, the 22,004, and I would go here and I say, okay, the accountant would say, all right, 15,000 was worked on job 101. So I'm going to record 80% of that is 12,000. And there's the cost of my job, 12,000 plus 15 direct material, direct labor and overhead, 39,000. All right, uh, 9,000 was in direct labor costs and therefore my manufacturing overhead, 80% of that is 7,200. Direct material, direct labor, overhead totals 23,200. 
and direct material, direct over, and so on. So therefore, 12 plus 72 plus 32, and I get my 22. Now notice, this one has that much material and that much labor, and they have the most overhead assigned to it. This job down here only has 5,000 uh, material for labor, and therefore has 3,200, okay? That's the job sheet. Now notice something else. This is direct material, so that's actual. That's actual, I measured it, direct material, right on. This is direct labor, and I measured that, that's actual. But this is not actual. Uh, it's an estimate. It's probably around 12,000, but I don't know exactly. I can't know exactly until the end of the year, until I know how much overhead was actually incurred for the whole year. And then how much did I actually apply to the jobs? All right. But again, work in process at the end of the they say in a month, 72.4. Now you look at the job sheets, job 101, total 39,000, 102, 103. And so the job sheets, which are on the shop floor, because the account always equal the work from process account in the financial accounting records. All right, so that's how I assign it. I take it uh, 12, 15, and then 80% of 15 is 12,000. Total job, 39,000. There were a thousand units in this job. Therefore, this job is $39 per unit. And there is the flow again, an overview of the flow. Raw materials, direct materials go here, indirect go down, manufacturing overhead. Labor, direct goes here, indirect goes down here. And overhead, uh, 22,000, many, uh, 20, that, uh, I'm sorry, that was the uh, labor. And these, you see, now I want to talk about this manufacturing overhead. This is an account you set up in the cost accounting systems. Now on this side, we're going to, we kept track of what we actually incur on this side we're keeping track of how much we apply to the overhead. So here's your manufacturing overhead account. On the debit side is the actual for the whole year. On the credit side is the amount applied to all the jobs for the whole year. At the end of the year, we add up the debits and we add up the credits. They're not going to be equal. It'd be highly unlikely that I guessed exactly what the overhead would be and I applied it exactly to all the jobs. It's not likely. I either incurred more than I applied to the jobs or I applied more to the jobs than I actually incurred. So if I incurred more than I applied, I have a debit balance. And because I incurred more than I applied, I underapplied the overhead. I did not apply enough overhead to my jobs. If I applied more if I, than I incurred, then I overapplied my manufacturing overhead. Okay. Can you repeat this part, please? Yes. Can you do that again? Yes, please. Yes, please. All right, I, I keep track in this account, manufacturing overhead, of the actual manufacturing overhead, actual. Let me go back. These are actual. I actually incurred that amount, this amount and this amount. So when I add that up and I transferred 22.4 to the jobs, I apply, this side is the apply. So you see, I have a debit balance here, which means I incurred more manufacturing overhead 
than I applied for this particular month. So what they're saying then is if I have a debit balance, I incurred more than I applied, so I have not applied enough. So all the jobs I produced during the year, the amount I assigned to cover the overhead was low because the overhead was more than I thought it was going to be. If on the other hand, I have a credit balance, that means I applied more than I actually incurred, then all the jobs I worked on during the year, I was applying overhead, I was applying so much to cover the overhead, and I applied too much. That is, I applied more than I actually incurred. I do not know this until the end of the year. Uh, what I'm saying here, this is the end of a month. All right, but this goes on for the whole year. And it's not to the end of the year, really, that, you know, uh, next month I might apply more than I incurred. It's not to the end of, end of the year that how much, how much I incurred. So you see, my cost of goods sold, all the products I sold during the year, I had cost them with the actual material, the actual, and an estimate for the overhead. Now at the end of the year, I find out that that estimate was too low. All right, I should have applied more. So therefore, if the estimate was too low, my cost of goods sold is low than it is actually. So uh, I debit it. If I have overhead, or if on the other hand, I applied too much to all the jobs I worked on during the year, then my cost of goods sold is too high higher than I, so I credit it by the difference of the under-applied or over-applied, because I have to have my over at actual amount. So if I have a 25,000 credit balance, that means I applied and I should have. So to close out the manufacturing account by debiting it and I increase or reduce the cost of goods sold. 